My name is Mr. DeArmond, and I work with the Knox County Schools Math Department. I'm lucky enough to be able to travel around and work with several different elementary schools with um, teachers and students as they work on math throughout the year. Obviously, we're all stuck at home right now. We want to provide you some opportunities to review and practice the things that you've learned with your teacher this year. Hopefully, you've picked up your extra learning packet from one of the school distribution food sites, um, or if you haven't done that, you can access the um, extra learning packet online um, at our Knox Schools website. I'm going to be going over some stuff with you um, to help you get ready to work on that packet this week. Each week when you're at school with your teachers, you go through a about a lesson a week. So it's covering one standard or one skill that you need to work on. And then those weeks are all the combined up into what we call units. So at the end of each unit, there is a math and action lesson that kind of brings all those things together. And um, it's kind of a real world um, practice on how to use those skills or those standards that you've learned. So we're gonna be going back to unit one, what you learned at the beginning of the year, this year in fifth grade. Um, I'm gonna be doing some quick review with you on some of the things you should have learned with your teacher. Now, we don't have a ton of time today, so I'm gonna go through some stuff. I'm not gonna show you every strategy that you probably know how to use. Um, so you're gonna have other strategies that you can use at home, um, ones that your teacher taught you or ones that you like to use yourself. So I'll be showing you a couple of things today, but again, there's lots of different ways that you can work out some of these problems. Now, when you started the school year, you and your teacher began working on um, operations with numbers. So you were continuing to add, subtract, multiply, and then divide with some bigger numbers. We also started working with decimals in fifth grade. And so today, what you're gonna be using this week for your learning packet um, is operations with decimals. So I wanna review some of that with you today just to keep that fresh with you and remind you of, like I said, some of the strategies you know how to use. So I'm gonna start off with adding decimals. All right, I'm adding and subtracting. We know that decimals have to stay lined up by the decimal places. So we're going to start off with this problem, 12 and 74 hundredths plus 3 and 6 tenths. All right, so I'll make sure when I wrote my problem that I lined up the decimal places and then also the other place values. So just a reminder, we have our tens place, our ones place, we have our decimals lined up, we have our tenths and our hundredths. Now, because it's so important that your decimal places be lined up when you add and subtract with decimals, a lot of you probably learned to use the um, place value chart to help you. So I'm gonna put one on here as well. Um, I'm gonna abbreviate a little bit. So there's my tens and ones place. I see a lot of teachers who have posters up in their classroom that have a special spot for the decimal. So we're gonna put that in there as well. And then we have our decimal places. Today we're gonna to have our tenths and our hundredths place. Now, I'm gonna have trouble writing that in here so that you can see it. So I am going to abbreviate that a little bit. I'm gonna put a 10 with a THS to get our tenths place. And I'm gonna put an H with a THS to talk about our hundredths place. Again, when we're talking about our decimals, we know they have that THS ending, hundredths, tenths, and so forth. So here's my place value chart, and I'm gonna use that to solve this problem right here. So I gotta start by filling in my numbers. So I have one ten, two ones. I can go ahead and put my decimal there. I have seven tenths and four hundredths in my first number. And again, we're adding three and six tenths. So it looks like that. Now I know some of you like to fill in with the zero with a placeholder um, just to keep yourself organized. So we can do that here, you don't have to. But I'm gonna add the zero right there. Because remember, Six tenths is the same thing as 60 hundredths. We're working in the hundredths place here we're adding, so we can go ahead and turn this number into hundredths. 
All right, so now we have it all set up in our place value chart. All we have to do is add, like normal. So I'm gonna add with my hundreds first. I have four hundreds plus zero hundreds. Gives me four hundreds. Seven hundreds and six hundreds actually is 13 hundreds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that 13 right there for right now, but we're gonna come back to that in a few minutes, all right? Go ahead and bring down our decimal place. Again, everything has to stay lined up. Again, by place value, our decimals have to be lined up when we're adding and subtracting with decimals. In the ones place, I have five. And then in the tens place, I just have one ten. So I look back at my number. Again, we have to come back to this because we know we can't have two numbers in a place value. So we can't leave the 13 there like it is. But what we do know is that 10 groups of tenths, 10 groups of tenths actually becomes a whole number, a whole one. We have to carry that over to our ones place, all right? At school, when you learned this with your teachers, you probably used some manipulatives. You probably looked at our base 10 blocks. I don't have any of those with me at home today, and neither do you. So we're just going to remind ourselves that when we get to a group of 10, we always have to shift that over to the next place value. So 10 tenths actually becomes a whole one. So instead of having 13 tenths, we know we're going to have to take that 10 away and move it over. And that's going to come over here to our ones place. So my number is actually going to be this right here, 16 and 34 hundredths. Now remember, when we're talking about decimals, when we read the number, the decimal becomes the word and. So 16 is my holes. I have 16 and, then 34 hundredths. And so when we name a decimal, we read it like the number that it is. So this is 34, but we call it by the last place value, the last decimal place value. So 16 and 34, we're working with hundredths. I can put that up here as well. I'm gonna do it up here again, just with the standard algorithm. because Some of us don't have to have the place value chart. Some of us do, and that's fine. So I'm gonna do it up here quickly again without the place value chart. Again, just a quick reminder. So adding with our standard algorithm, I don't have anything in the hundreds place except for four. I have my seven and six, which is 13. Again, I can only put one number in each spot. So I know that group of 10 tenths gets carried over to the ones place. I'm going to drop my decimal down. Three and two is five, plus the one I brought over from my tenths place is now six, and we just have one group of 10. So 16 and 34 hundredths, all right? So hopefully addition is pretty easy for you. Um, it's not too complicated. Again, making sure you have everything lined up is the hard part, and then it's just basic addition after that. So again, the place value chart might help you, if you have trouble keeping everything lined up, all right? But you don't have to use it. You can just do a quick standard algorithm approach to adding decimals. The other skill you learned in uh, unit one that you're gonna have to use this week as you do your review packet is subtracting with decimals. Again, the same thing. We have to keep it lined up. So some of you may want to use the place value chart. Um, and fill that in. You don't have to do that. I'm not going to do that again just because I've already shown you that with addition um, and to save some time today. All right, so we're going to do a couple problems with subtraction um, because it does get a little trickier. Um, some of us have a little bit harder time subtracting when you have to do a lot of borrowing and carrying. We call that regrouping. All right, we have to take it from one spot, regroup it into another spot, and we're going to talk about that um, with two different problems today. All right, so we're going to start off with 30 and 24 hundredths. And we're going to subtract 12 and 12 hundredths. Now again, just like addition, I made sure all my place values are lined up. So some of you may be putting that into your place value chart. All right. But my decimal places are lined up. And I've got my tenths and my hundredths again in our decimal place. All right. So once it's lined up, all we have to do is subtract like normal, just like addition. So 4 minus 2 gives me... Two left over, 
2 minus 1 is, of course, 1. I can bring down my decimal place. And then we get into the 30 minus 12, the whole number side of our decimal number. I can't take away anything from 0. So now I'm going to have to regroup from the tens place. So I'm going to take one of those groups of 10, and I'm going to bring it over here to the ones place. So now I have a group of 10 that I took apart and busted up into 10 ones over here. And now I can subtract. 10 minus 2 is 8. 2 minus 1 is 1. So our answer is 18 and 12 hundredths. 18 and 12 hundredths. Now we're going to do another subtraction problem. This one you have to do a little bit more regrouping. Again, just to give us some practice with that because that's where we can kind of get confused sometimes when you have to regroup a couple of different times. So this time our number is going to be 25 and 24 hundredths. And again, with subtraction, I'm going to everything to line up. So my next number is 7 and 16 hundredths. And I've lined up my place values, lined up my decimal place. All right, now we can subtract. 4 minus 6, I can't do that. I don't have enough if I'm trying to take 6 away from 4. So I am going to have to go over here to the tenths place, and I'm going to have to regroup that over into some hundredths. So again, when I take one of those away, I'll leave one left behind, and that group of tenths I'm going to bust apart into a ten things of a hundredth, all right? So one tenth, if I bust it apart into ten pieces, it becomes um, ten hundredths. So instead of four, we now have fourteen hundredths. I brought over ten plus the four I already had. And now I can subtract. Fourteen minus six gives me eight. I can subtract my tenths place. My tenths place. One minus one, of course, is zero. I'm going to go ahead and bring down my decimal, making sure it's all lined up. Over here on the whole side of my number, in my ones place, I cannot do five minus seven. So I'm going to have to regroup again, this time from the tens place. So I have one group of 10 left over. I'm taking one group of 10 and bringing it over to the ones place. I'm going to bust that 10 apart into 10 ones. So I have 10 ones and five ones, which actually gives me 15 ones. And now I can subtract 15 minus seven is eight. And 1 minus 0, again, there's only one thing left in our tens place. So our number is 18 and 8 hundredths. Again, just a reminder about how to read this number. We start with the whole number, 18, and then and for the decimal. And then here, sometimes it's confusing what to call it when it has a 0 in the tenths place. So remember, we read the number as it is, 18 and 8. This is the number 8. And then we name it by the last place value. So this, again, is tenths and then hundredths. So 18 and 8 hundredths. So there is your quick review for addition and subtraction. Hopefully, again, that's pretty quick and easy for you. Once you get everything lined up correctly, then it's just regular addition or regular subtraction, making sure we line everything up and bring our decimal down into our answer. Okay? So again... That place value chart might help some of you. You also uh, learned how to multiply with decimals in Unit 1, and so we're going to review that as well. But before we do that, I want to remind you a little bit about some of the patterns you saw with your teachers as you're learning about decimal multiplication and what we call multiplying by powers of 10. You probably remember your teacher talking about that a little bit. So I want to just do a quick review and show you some of those patterns that you learned with your teacher. All right, so in third grade, you learned your basic multiplication facts. Six times eight, we know, is equal to 48. All right, and that's not going to change. Six times eight is always going to be 48. But what will change is, is if we turn these numbers into decimals, it will affect our answer a little bit. So for instance, if I keep multiplying by six, but instead of eight ones or eight holes, I'm gonna multiply by eight tenths. All right, and it's gonna change my answer just a little bit. Six times eight is still 48. 
But because I'm multiplying by a decimal and not a whole number, it changes my answer. I will have to have a decimal in my answer, in my product. So 6 times 8 is 48, but 6 times 8 tenths. Well, because we're multiplying by tenths, we have to have tenths in our answer. All right? So to have tenths, we know that tenths is one decimal place. So I have to have one decimal place in my answer. All right, I'm making my decimals pretty big to make sure you can see them at home. So six times eight tenths is actually four and eight tenths. All right, so we still have six times eight is 48, but when we add that decimal place for multiplying by tenths, we have to make sure we have tenths in our answer. So four and eight tenths. And the same thing would continue on if we multiplied by eight hundredths. So again, now we have two decimal places. We're multiplying by eight hundredths. The number's still going to be 48 somehow, but we're going to shift around our decimal place. And now that we're multiplying by hundredths, we have to have hundredths in our answer. Well, hundredths is two decimal places. So I'm going to put my 48 over there. Well, my 48 now has to be both of them in the decimal places to make it two decimal places. So my decimal comes there, and 6 times 8 hundredths is actually 48 hundredths. All right, if we think about that as like the idea of groups of, 6 groups of 8 hundredths would be 48 hundredths, if that makes sense to you. All right, so that pattern can continue as you continue to multiply with um, other decimals. So if we multiply by thousandths, we'd have our number in the thousandths place, and so on. All right, and you started your understanding of multiplication with decimals by looking at those patterns and applying what you know about multiplying whole numbers to multiplying by decimals. All right, so let's dig into a multiplication problem. And we're going to start off with 2 and 75 hundredths. And this time we're going to multiply by a whole number. We're going to multiply by 3. All right. So I want to put that there for right now. And I'm going to just walk us through um, the standard algorithm for that in just a minute. All right. Again, most of you are probably moving on to the standard algorithm. It's a little bit quicker. Um, so we're going to come back to that <clears throat> and talk about how to do that with a standard algorithm, multiplying a number with decimals times the whole number. I also wanted to remind you about your, what we call the area model that some of you probably like to use. You learn to use it in, again in third grade with multiplication as you started. And now you can also use that with decimals. As I told you before, there are lots of um, different strategies that you've learned with your teacher. I don't have time to go over all of them today. So if you remember a strategy that works for you, Please use that at home while you're doing your practice this week. So our second multiplication problem we're going to look at is 1 and 25 hundredths. And we're going to multiply it by a decimal. So we're going to multiply it by 5 tenths. So those are the two problems we're going to look at. You'll notice one of them we're multiplying a decimal by a decimal, and here a decimal by a whole number. All right, so let's start with this one over here. We're going to build our area model using this example. So again, an area model, we know we set it up with like a rectangle. All right, you learned this again in third grade when you started using the area model to multiply. And you take one of your um, numbers and put it over here on the side. So I'm going to put my five tenths. Make sure you see that decimal place right there. And then my other number, I'm going to put across the top, and I'm going to um, expand that out. We call that expanded form. We break it apart by the place values. So I'm going to multiply by 1. Remember, each place value goes in its own box. So my whole number, 5 tenths times 1 gets a box. 5 tenths times 2 tenths is going to get its own box. And then 5 tenths times 5 hundredths is going to get its own box. All right, so we have three boxes because we have three things, three place values in what we're multiplying. 
and then we're going to multiply everything by 5 tenths. Now, when you learn to do this, you actually put little plus signs in there to show you that that's all one number. We're going to put it back together at the end. So now let's actually fill in our area model. 5 times 1. Well, this is 5 times 1 is 5. But we're talking about 5 tenths, all right? So we know anything times 1 is going to be itself. So 5 times 1 or 5 tenths times 1 is just going to be what it is already. It's going to be 5 tenths, all right? And that's what's going to go in our first box. Then I'm taking 5 tenths times 2 tenths. Now, if we think about what we know about numbers, and again, multiplying by that power of 10, we talked a little bit about when we were looking at those patterns a minute ago. If I take 10 times 10, I know that 10 times 10 equals 100. So the same thing goes when we talk about tenths in our decimal place. A tenth times a tenth has to equal not a hundred, but a hundredth. All right, we talk about those THS endings. We talk about our decimals. So if 10 times 10 is a hundred, then tenths times tenths also has to be hundredths. So when we do our answer here, we're going to have a number that's going to be in the hundredths place. All right, so five times two is 10, as we said. But we have to have it in the hundredths place. Tenths times tenths, hundredths. So if I have something in the hundredths place, I need two decimal places. And so I have a number here that I can just put a decimal in front of to make it two decimal places. So five tenths times two tenths is one tenth, or what we would say ten hundredths, all right? Ten hundredths. Let's keep going. Let's multiply 5 tenths by 5 hundredths. Well, again, we know that 5 times 5 is 25. And as I told you before with those patterns, that's not going to change. 5 times 5 will always be 25. But what we do have to think about is our decimal places. Now, I told you tenths times tenths gives us hundredths. When we multiply 10 times 100, 10 groups of 100 actually is 1,000. I don't know if you can see it there, but it is the number 1,000. So same thing applies when we're multiplying by decimals. Tenths times hundredths equals thousandths. So we have to have something in the thousandths place when we multiply 10 times 100 or tenths times hundredths. So we have to have thousandths. So to have thousandths, I need three decimal places, which means I have to add a zero to get three decimal places and then I can put my decimal there all right so we know that five times five is 25 but five tenths times five hundredths is 25 again now we have to do thousands because a ten times a hundred is a thousand all right now we filled in our area model and what we're going to do is we got to put it all back together all right so I have Five tenths, I have ten hundredths, and I have twenty-five thousandths. And I'm, you'll notice, oops, be careful when you're adding them back down here. I lined everything up again now because I'm adding it all back together. All right, so I'm going to add it all back together. Um, we expanded it out, and we're going to put it back together here. I'm going to add my place values. I only have a five in the thousandths place. I have two in the hundredths place. I have a five and a one. So I have six in the tenths place. Then I bring down my, plate, my um, decimal and then all my ones again in my whole number side. So if we go back up here to the top, one in 25 hundredths times 5 tenths is 625 thousandths. Now you probably learned this at school, an easy way to check and make sure you ended up with the correct number, especially when it comes to multiplying with those decimals, is that you check the number of decimal places in your problem and make sure that shows up in the product. So I had three decimal places in my problem. I need to have three decimal places 
in my product. So I think we came up with the right answer. All right, I'm gonna leave that up there, but I'm aiming on a race our area model. Um, and we're gonna go back and look at this problem right here, and we're just gonna do that with the standard algorithm, okay? So if you don't wanna to have to go to the trouble of doing the area model, that's fine. You can do the standard algorithm um, on this problem over here, a decimal times the whole number, all right? So again, what we know about multiplication is those numbers are not gonna change. What changes is the decimal place when we're multiplying by decimals. So five times three, I know that number is 15, but I can't, if I'm doing the standard algorithm, I can't put two numbers in one place value, all right? So I have to regroup that and pull it over into our next place value, because I know that 10 groups of one actually becomes another whole, all right? So I do seven times three. Well, I know that seven times three is 21, all right? And I can add in that extra piece that 22, all right, but I'm gonna have to carry over that group of, well, we said 20, and we talked about 22 there. And then I'm gonna do three times two is six, plus the two more is eight. Again, here's where we have to think about where our decimal is going to go. I'm multiplying by hundredths. I have two decimal places in my answer. This is a whole number, so there's no decimal here. So I have to have two decimal places in my answer. And that means my decimal will go right there. And I will have 8 and 25 hundredths. 8 and 25 hundredths. So 2 and 75 hundredths times 3 is 8 and 25 hundredths. Remember, you can also kind of check the reasonableness of your answer when you think about whole numbers. If I do three times two is six, I know my answer has to at least be six because my whole numbers, and then my decimal place, when I multiply it out, is going to bump up my answer just a little bit, all right? If I got something like three times 275 hundredths, and I got like 12, that wouldn't make sense with even just thinking about our whole numbers. All right, so that's a quick review for what you need this week to do your learning packet. So we added and subtracted with decimals. Again, you can use the place value chart to help you do that. Helps you keep everything lined up because when you add and subtract with decimals, they have to be lined up by the place value, all right? With your decimals being lined up, your ones and tens or your tenths and your hundredths. Um, with multiplication, you can use our area model like we use down here. You can use the standard algorithm. The important part is checking to make sure you have the right number of decimal places in your answer. Two here, three here, all right? So your learning packet this week is, again, the math in action um, lesson from Unit 1. And it, again, pulls together all the things you learned in Unit 1. Um, there's a variety of problems. You're going to look at going to a pet fair and trying to sell dog collars. You're going to be looking at um, something to do with, like, a robot. There's a um, thing about a petting zoo. What you need to know about the math in action lessons is that these are problem-solving lessons. So there's not necessarily going to be one correct answer. There might be several answers. If you and your parents or you and whoever at your house sit down together to do this, you might come up with two or three different answers, and that's fine, all right? There's going to be different combinations of answers, but it's all real-world application of using addition, subtraction, and multiplication with decimals. Um, just a quick reminder, because it is a real-world situation, you are working mostly with money. So just a reminder, if you're working with money, we only have two decimal places, all right? We don't go into um, the thousandths when we talk about money. Hope you're having a good um, week at home. I uh, hope you're staying healthy and safe and enjoy doing your um, review and practice this week in that math and action lesson.